Hey everyone, so I was working on some tweaks to my website and I found myself using one of my favorite features of Vim that I wanted to share with you today. So here's the deal. I am doing some modifications to my, my clearly very advanced website, right? So this is just my, my blog more or less where I have articles I write that oftentimes correlate to a video that I post on YouTube. So what I want to do here is I want to change these around to have a formatting similar to this, where there's the date in the front and then the title. And there's obviously formatting differences to the date itself, but that's not a huge concern here. Now what this looks like from an HTML perspective is I've got a new unordered list HTML element class that I'm correlating to post list down here. And I'm just playing around with the CSS. You know, I like to make really, really ugly, but simple, you know, CSS changes and things to my website. So I'm just kind of tweaking this. So the main thing I've got to do here is I've got to bring one of these list elements up, paste it. I've got to go to the end where there is the date in the brackets, pull that out. So grab this, delete it, bring it to the front, and then put a space in like that. Now you've probably already noticed if you looked closely at what I was doing, the efficiency there is probably not the best it could be. In fact, most of the time that I'm using Vim, I'm not being as efficient as I could be because frankly, there's kind of two things at play whenever I use Vim. The first thing is a lack of knowledge. I'll never actually have the knowledge of how I could save keystrokes at every instance. And the second thing is sometimes even when I've got the knowledge somewhere buried in my brain, I've got faster muscle memory of how to do it with more keystrokes. But since I can recall that muscle memory so much quicker, especially when I'm flowing through work stuff, I actually just do it the longer way because it's faster, right? Doesn't mean I shouldn't learn how to do it the more efficient way, it just means reality is I'm not always that efficient. Now, that all aside, one of the things I can kind of make up for that lack of efficiency is this thing that Vim calls macros. And you can think of macros like recording a sequence of Vim commands and then playing them over. So as long as we get the pattern right and repeatable, it doesn't actually matter how efficient we are up front, right? It's just a matter of telling Vim to repeat that sequence again and again. So where we're going with this, let's, let's kind of play this back. I'll bring all the list elements up to this top list up here. Go to the website, hit refresh. You can see now I've got a replication of my, my list, the top and the bottom. And obviously what we want to do here is we want to bring all those dates to the front. So what we can do here is record a sequence that we can repeat, essentially creating again a macro. So let's try this. I will start on this already edited line here, so line nine in this case. Now, how this works with Vim is you hit the Q key to say, I'm going to start a recording. And if you look in the bottom right of my screen here, you'll see that Q key has been hidden. Now, the next key we strike is effectively the key we're going to map to that recording, to that macro. So since we're working with dates, I'll choose D. So if you look in the bottom right, I've got Q and then D, and you can see in the bottom left now, I am recording at D. So it's important to know what arbitrary key I chose, in this case D, because that's how we're going to recall the sequence in a second. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm, I'm live now. Think of it like the recording button is on. I need, to, I need to get this sequence right. So I am going to go down a line to 10. And I'm even going to do some like preemptive steps to make sure it's mostly repeatable regardless of the context. So I'm going to hit the pipe key to go to the beginning of the line. I am going to do forward slash left bracket. And while it's not necessary, the first thing my brain goes to, because I was trying this earlier, is putting a space here because the format that's consistent with all these dates is bracket space. So I want to make sure, just in case there's another bracket, it only picks this one up. So I'll hit enter there and my key goes all the way to November 29th. I'm going to visually select again and I'm going to visually select up to the closing bracket. So now I've got the November date selected. I will hit D on my keyboard to delete that and then hit the pipe key again to go to the beginning of the line. Now, if you look at where I want to paste it based on line nine, I want to put it between the closing caret and the opening caret. So again, using search, I will do closing caret, opening caret, and you can see it's selecting all of those. I'll hit enter, which will then put my cursor at the beginning of the closing caret. Since I deleted, Vim has automatically yanked or made a copy of what I deleted. 
I can paste that in. I'll then go back into insert mode, go one character over, which should take me to the end of that sequence and put a space in. I will then hit escape. And just for, again, cleanliness sake, I will go to my pipe and bring myself back over. Now, some of you super, super advanced Vim people might be cringing because perhaps I did two or three extra keystrokes that I didn't need to. But that's actually okay in, the, in this case because reality is as long as what I did is solid and repeatable and doesn't have flaws or variants between lines 10 through 19, I'm going to be able to recall this and do it all over these lines no matter what. So you can see I'm still recording in the bottom left. I'm just going to hit Q on my keyboard to effectively stop the recording. And now I've got a recording or macro bound to the D key. So to recall this, I'll make sure that I start on a line like line 10. And if I do the at sign again, you can see it in the bottom right. Once I do that, I'm saying call this macro. And then if I hit D, it is going to do the D macro. So you can see it did it right there. And I can just keep hitting at D, at D, and repeat that unit of work. Now another cool shortcut that you can do here is you can actually call the at sign twice. That would say, I know I did at D last time, just repeat that same macro. So if I do at at, at at, at at, at at, at at, at at. at, 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 at. Just like that, I'm able to take that sequence, right? You can imagine if this was uh, you know, 100 lines, maybe I've been writing for years and years and years, this would be something that I could do just like that, and it would be super fast and super quick. Now, one last thing I'll leave you with as kind of a, a quick pointer is you can actually recall the amount of times you wanna replicate that command, okay? So again, going back to line nine, let's say I've done at D, and I've recalled it, right? And I was actually a line too, too low there. So at D. Interesting. What do I have? Uh, huh, you can actually see a flaw somewhere in my... Oh, sorry, I didn't go back far enough. Okay, that, that would fix it. Okay, so if I do at D now, there we go. Okay, cool. So inside of this, I want to do it, uh, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, right? So on line 10 and down, if I wanted to repeat this 10 times, assuming I've got the add in there, I can actually type in the number 10. You can see it in the bottom right here. And then I could just do add add again since I've recalled it prior. And it will actually do it 10 times over, just like that. And I believe you could even call it with just at D with 10. So if we did 10 at D, same idea, right? So this is hugely, hugely beneficial when you're doing these really mundane string manipulation like tasks. So hopefully you found this interesting and useful. Like I said, there's tons of resources out here that talk about how to do this, but I figured this was kind of an interesting use case and maybe it would bring to light for some of you who have been in this situation, how you can use Vim macros to your benefit. So I'll see you in the next video. And again, I hope you found this useful.